Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 178. Today we are beginning the third probation. All three of us met at Mother Margaret's as the other sisters were having their probation in the novitiate. Mother Margaret began with a prayer, explained to us what the third probation consists of, and then spoke on how great is the grace of the perpetual vows. Suddenly I began to cry out loud. In an instant, all God's graces appeared before the eyes of my soul, and I saw myself so wretched and ungrateful toward God. The sisters began to rebuke me, saying, Why did she break out crying? But Mother Margaret came to my defense, saying that she was not surprised. At the end of the hour, I went before the Blessed Sacrament, and like the greatest and most miserable of wretches, I begged for his mercy that he might heal and purify my poor soul. Then I heard these words, My daughter, all your miseries have been consumed in the flame of my love, like a little twig thrown into a roaring fire. By humbling yourself in this way, you draw upon yourself and upon other souls an entire sea of my mercy. I answered, Jesus, mold my poor heart according to your divine delight. Throughout the third probation, it was my duty to help the sister in the vestry. This duty gave me many occasions to practice virtues. Sometimes I had to take linen to certain sisters three times, and still one would not satis- one could not satisfy them. But I also came to recognize the great virtues of some sisters who always asked for the poorest things from the vestiary. I admired their spirit of humility and mortification. During Advent, a great yearning for God arose in my soul. My spirit rushed toward God, and with all its might, During that time, the Lord gave me much light to know his attributes. The first attribute which the Lord gave me to know is his holiness. His holiness is so great that all the powers and virtues tremble before him. The pure spirits veil their faces and lose themselves in unending adoration, and with one single word they express the highest form of adoration, that is, holy. The holiness of God is poured out upon the church of God and upon every living soul in it, but not in the same degree. There are souls who are completely penetrated by God, and there are those who are barely alive. The second kind of knowledge which the Lord granted me concerns his justice. His justice is so great and penetrating that it reaches deep into the heart of things, and all things stand before him in naked truth and nothing can withstand him. The third attribute is love and mercy, and I understood that the greatest attribute is love and mercy. It unites the creature with the Creator. This immense love and abyss of mercy are made known in the incarnation of the Word and in the redemption of humanity, and it is here that I saw this as the greatest of all God's attributes. Today I was cleaning the room in one of the sister of one of the sisters. Although I was trying to clean it with utmost care, she kept following me all the time and saying, "You've left a speck of dust here and a spot on the floor there." At each of her remarks, I did each place over a dozen times, just to satisfy her. It is not work that makes me tired, but all this talking and excessive demands. My whole day's martyrdom was not enough for her. So she went to the directress and complained, Mother, who is this careless sister who doesn't know how to work quickly? The next day I went again to do the same job without trying to explain myself. When she started driving me, I thought, Jesus, one can be a silent martyr. It is not the work that wears you out, but this kind of martyrdom. As St. Faustina and the other sisters begin their third probation, the final preparation before their perpetual vows, Mother Margaret spoke of what a great grace final vows is. 
and St. Faustina begins to cry aloud, and the others don't understand why, but the superior defends her and is not surprised. So we can ask, what is happening here? Well, Sister Faustina had explained earlier that when a soul is purified by the light of the Lord, it becomes very sensitive and is able to perceive God's graces. One is also very aware of personal shortcomings in comparison to the perfection of God. Now, great saints don't think of themselves as the greatest sinners, but they become more acutely aware of their shortcomings in the light of God's love. A dimly lit room can seem to be clean, but when we turn on the bright lights, we can see the dust much more clearly. Now, Jesus reassures Faustina that her imperfections will be purified in the fire of his love, and her humbling herself causes the Lord to pour out an ocean of graces and mercy on her and on many others. During Advent, the Lord enlightens St. Faustina about his attributes, his holiness, his justice, and his love and mercy. Now for us, these can just seem to be abstract words, but in heaven we will have a greater understanding and appreciation of these attributes, and we'll be able to adore the Lord forever, having a better sense of who the Lord is, all holy, all just, all love, and all merciful. We can contemplate that even now here on earth. We can begin to come to an understanding of God's love, his mercy, his holiness, his justice. St. Faustina tells us of a situation in which she was cleaning the room of another sister. Nothing she could do would please the sister. It was a great challenge for St. Faustina, a type of silent martyrdom. We can learn from her. And we can offer up these types of sufferings, these difficulties with others, to the Lord. It can have a tremendous value if we offer them up from our heart as a sacrifice. Mm-hmm.